Okay, good. Welcome to the last uh, talk of the day in this track. Um, Ivan Topolniak, I have been working in, in Common for quite some time now. And first, like before every single talk, uh, who is using Common here? I know there are some users here. Please raise your hands. Thanks a lot for using our tool. Thanks for the feedback. Thanks for everything uh, you have done to make Common a better tool. Okay, we have received lots of feedback after the release of 040, and that has been super amazing. We never thought there were so many people using our tool, and we want to thank for everything you have done for us. It's not just that we give you something, you're also giving us like the fuel we need to keep working and keep doing this stuff, okay? So, oh, okay, so for the guys who are here who have no idea what Common is, it's an open source tool uh, tailored for monitoring applications running on the JVM. It was born as a tool for monitoring ACA, Spray, and then Play, because that's exactly what we need at the moment, but it has been growing and growing, and we are trying to make it the tool for monitoring applications running on the entire JVM, regardless of whether you're using Scala or Java or any other JVM capable language, okay? It has a core library that provides you metrics and tracing APIs that are Java friendly. They're, they were not very Java friendly, but since, but since 040, they ha have become very friendly for Java users. Uh, this is meant to be production monitoring, not just something that you use on your toy projects on the weekends just to see oh, how fast Scala and ACA can be together. No, this is meant to be used at production and this project has been around for a couple of years now and is already being used in production by many companies. Some of them uh, received our help to make it go into production with Come On, and some other just show up like, oh yeah, we're using ACA, we needed something, we found your stuff, we like it, so we're using it now in production, okay? Two years ago, when we started doing this, the, the real motivations for doing this was First, we needed something. We, um, we created an uh, ACA spray application. It was like super, super fast. It was doing everything it had to do. It exceeded our expectations. And then when we, were to put it, when we wanted to put it in production, we couldn't see anything. There was no way to know how, it, how fast was it going. Was it really fast or was it just an illusion that we had because we wanted the technology so bad? So it was simple. We need to put this in production, and the company was not allowing us to put that in production until there was a way to monitor it to see how it was performing, okay? And by then, there was no open source alternative, and the only commercial offering at the moment was the TypeSafe console, which wasn't a very good fit for what we needed at the moment. So we found ourselves in the need of this, and we looked around, and we were not alone. Like, everyone out there doing ACA and Spray and Play had pretty much the same problem. They needed a way to monitor it. So we said, well, let's give something back to the community and let's do something that we can share and that can be used for everyone. Now, if we talk about monitoring, we have um, some kind of opinions about how it should be done. Okay, we, we think we should always start from the higher levels, like measuring requests, like high level functionality in your application. If you are measuring uh, logging, how long does it take to log into your application? Or if you have some search facilities, how long does it take to actually see the results on the client side? Okay, it, this is what we call trace metrics. These are, when we talk about traces, we're practically, talk, practically talking about requests. We use the term trace because it is not always a request response schema, okay? Sometimes you have different things. You have maybe some flows and you want to measure from the beginning to the end of the flow as a trace, but it doesn't have to be a request response cycle, okay? Then if you know that something is wrong at that level, then you can go a little bit deeper with something we call segments. Segments talk about little pieces that make up the trace, okay? If you are calling an external service, 
within your application, like you get a request and you do some stuff and you call two, three, five other services and then you aggregate all the information to send a response back to the client who's waiting for you, all these interactions, we usually call them segments. Okay, so trace is like the whole request thing and segment, segments are small pieces of code or functionality that run inside your application. And then, if you go to the lower level of, of all of this, if you're running applications made with ACA and stuff, probably the lower level of abstraction is gonna be actors, or it's gonna be features or dispatchers. It's like the very uh, base components on top of which you are constructing your stuff. And you also need to keep an eye on that, because sometimes the problem you have is that maybe an actor is too slow for something. It, it shouldn't be an actor, it should be a router with a couple more fellows helping do stuff. Okay, so we needed like go from high to the lowest de de level of detail with as easy as possible, okay? So um, we created come on core, come on, basically gives you three things, a matrix module, a tracing module, and a module loader, okay? The matrix module is all about entities, okay? When we talk about actor metrics, well, actors for come on and are just entities, and these entities have a number of instruments associated with it. Those instruments maybe are a histogram that measures processing time or time in mailbox, or a simple counter for using for measuring uh, how many errors did the um, actor had, and we also have some other instruments related to it. We will go to those uh, instrument types in, in a little bit. Okay, we also have filters because in the case of actors, for example, it's not viable to just measure every single actor you create in your application. You always want to select what things you are interested in and what things you can leave uh, outside of the monitoring infrastructure. And then we have subscriptions. So all, all we do with the metrics module in Common is available for any piece of code who, wants, who wants to consume the metrics information. Be it one of our reporting modules that send information to StatsD, to Numerelic, to Datadog, and to some other tools we're creating right now, or even your code, like if you, within your application logic, want to know, well, how healthy is this actor? You can tell Camon, hey, send me a message with information about this specific actor. You will get that information on every tick, and then you can do whatever you want with it, okay? And then the tracing module allows you to generate all these uh, relationships between events, okay? The, the tracing model is just about creating a trace and putting information on it. Start a, a segment, finish a segment, add metadata to it, and then at the end of your request, close that trace. Okay, normally you will not have to do this manually, but there is an API within the tracing module that is created precisely for that. We will see how this goes in a demo we're gonna do right now. And of course, distributed tracing is coming soon, it's gonna be there. And the module loader is just a piece of code that loads every single module you have in the class path. So adding a module to Camon is just adding the dependency and then Camon will pick it up and start it unless you say it, you tell Camon not to do so. So this is pretty much how it looks like when they are all together at the middle, at the, at the center of everything is Camon core, which provides these basic APIs. And then we have modules that build on top of that. Modules like Common Aka, Common Spray, Common Scala, Common Play, all these modules provide some sort of bytecode instrumentation. But there's one thing I would like to make very clear: Common is not a instrumentation library. You don't need instrumentation to use Common Core. Okay? What you get by using Common Aka, Common Spray, and all these modules is that they already recognize when a message is sent to an actor, when a request comes in when you're using spray can, or when you're using play, when, when a request is ready to be processed by your application, and it can know when it starts, how it flows through your application, and then when it finishes, so it will automatically measure all those things for you without you having to code that. Because actually you don't have access to some of those components from your, um, 
client code, okay? And these guys, yes, they provide instrumentation, but that's not a uh, need for using Kamon. It's just a commodity we have for users using this, um, this libraries frameworks. Okay, and on the other side, we have reporters. These, these are the guys who connect to Common Core and subscribe to information. They say, hey, give me on every tick all information you have about these categories, these kinds of entities. And then they push it accordingly to the protocol of the metrics backend. Like New Relic has an HTTP API, Datadog and StatsD have UDP. They're a little bit different, but they use UDP for that, and it works. Now, Everything that is on the left side is live, okay? You, within Camon, have two types of APIs. The metric recording API is like the mutable side of things. Everything you do there is just write only. You can only write stuff. You can put recordings on a histogram or move a counter up and down, but you cannot see the values there. Everything on that side is unstable because it's mutable, it's changing as your application behavior is being measured, and then on every tick, is usually 10 seconds by default, it can be configured. We take a snapshots of all of that instruments that are available in common, and then we flush them to all the interested parties. Okay, so it's left side, mutable, right side, totally mutable, safely shareable. You can send it like, do whatever you want with that information. So, um, now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take a very, very simple spray application, and we're gonna start monitoring it with, with come on. Oh. Okay, well, you, you can see the, the, the important code, which is here, this little start server thing, and we're good to go. Or let me just... Yeah, it might be a little bit better. Okay. So, what do we need to would come on in, in our application. First, things we, first, th first thing we need is add the, um, the command dependencies. Command is a simple library. You just pull it. And here I'm including command core, command spray, command stats D, and another thing I'm gonna show at the end. Okay. Huh? Oh. Sorry. something here. Okay, now you can kind of see. Okay, good. So this little spray application uh -huh, needs a few things. One is a start come on, okay? That's a, requ a new requirement we have. We used to be very, very tight to the actor API, so in previous command versions, you need to have an actor system, and it had to be implicit like everywhere for every single command API to work. It was cool if you're using ACA because you can get the actor system from like everywhere, but if you're using other tools, it's not that easy. And in fact, in fact it was kind of a problem to get people into using Kamon if they were not using ACA. So now Kamon has its own actor system, which is like a closed thing, it's only used by Kamon, and then you can have whatever you want. You want to use ACA, use it. You want to do a spring application and use Kamon to monitor it, you can do it. It's like completely decoupled. It's, there are very few needs from the client side to provide to Kamon so Kamon can work properly. So first thing to do is Kamon that start, this, this will start the metrics module, start the tracing module, and then start all the modules that have been found in the um, class path. So when we do this, and we start the application, you will see an error that this thing, you might be suffering by seeing this, aspect J we were missing, Okay, this basically means, hey, you have the common ACA module, common spray, and common scala, and those guys need bytecode instrumentation. They provide bytecode instrumentation, they need the aspect jQuery. So you need to start your application using the aspect jQuery. So I have another run configuration here that has the um, aspect jQuery. It's just a simple JVM 
JVM option. So let's start our application again with that. It will always add a few seconds to the startup process because the SPG Weaver is inspecting lots of classes to know if they need to, if it needs to put some stuff into the, uh, into the point codes we have uh, instrumentations for. Okay, so now the, um, the application is, is running and I don't know if you noticed that I put the command.stats the module here. Okay, and if we go and see our application.com file, I already set the host name where our statsd module is running, which is using the Docker Grafana Graphite uh, Docker image that we have in our website. I don't know if you are using it, but it has been a very, very successful tool for getting people into seeing some metrics information because usually setting up all these things together like statsd, graphite, especially graphite, and then Grafana on top of that can be a little complicated process. So we put everything in a single Docker image, you just boot it and you will get where you are about to see. So here, cool. We have actor metrics, we have number of processed message, we have mailbox sizes, time in mailbox, we have lots of information here. And all we did was just come on the start, we added filters, which I didn't mention, but here we have act fi filters for ACA actor, that's a category. We have ACA actor, ACA router, ACA dispatcher. We're basically saying pick every single actor you find and push metrics for it. And here we have. We have all this actor information. We also have routers. Uh, well, we don't have routers here, but we also have dispatcher information. But here below, there's one thing that, that is missing, okay? We have trace metrics, it's cool, it means that instrumentation kicked in and it recognizes that we have requests coming, requests coming into the application and it is measuring how long it is taking the application to process them. But we see here that these traces are called unnamed trace. There is no information about what is going on here and this is a, a, a typical problem that you face when you are running precisely spray application because we don't have any decent way to generate an automatic, uh, an, an automatic trace name that will be good or not very uh, unique so you can group things together. So in this case, what we provide is a simple directive um, with, come on, oh, sorry. Okay, come on, trace directives, good. And then what we're gonna do is simply, um, select within our routing tree, which parts of the application do we want to name one way or another. We know the trace is the request thing, so if a request gets to this side of the routing tree, I'm gonna call it, let's say, a resource a. So this is going to be trace name. Let's call it cool resource A. And then this other branch of the routing tree, we're going to call it uh, sad resource B. Because That's how we're gonna do it. Okay, now if we run this application again, now you're not gonna get this uh, meaningless unnamed trace thing. You will get the real names for your application. That's what you really want to do when you're monitoring an, an application because this gives you meaningful names. You're supposed to know what every single request means in your application. And obviously you will want to get metrics related to what means something to you. If I just put slash resource, uh, what does it mean? Nothing, okay? 
But if you put a name that you can relate with something, that you can relate with a feature, with something that has been asked for your application to do, then you are in a very, very good situation. And now we can see cool resource A is doing some stuff and sad resource B is also doing some stuff. We have like, before we had everything under unnamed trace, now we have like half and half between one of the resources and the other one. So that simple, we got metrics into the spray application and we also, as so in the beginning, have this um, number of processed messages and stuff, like all actor metrics that you are probably gonna need as well, okay? If you were asking how, it, how is that happening, I included a little piece of code that as long as the, as, as soon as the application boots, it will start um, sending requests using a spray client to the same application so that it hits the instrumentation and, and that's all the thing. Okay, so that's why I didn't have any AB doing some work on the, on the side. Now, wait, okay. So doing that comes with lots of um, challenges, okay? The first challenge, the biggest one, the one that took us uh, the longer time to solve was keeping context because when you have an application, like what we used to call them, the traditional model, which is like every single server application out there since like 10 years or ago, like all of them look the same. You do everything in the same thread. You have one thread dedicated to the request processing and everything happens there. So if you have something like this, every, everything happens sequentially in the same thread, you use a thread local, you put everything there and it works. You just, there, there's, there's, is, is a no-brainer, it works and it's very simple. Now, then people said, well, we need to start doing some things in parallel, we need to um, keep your users more happy, do things faster, and then they kind of enhance the model. They will still have a single thread that is tied to the entire execution of the request, but they might submit some work to be done on a thread pool. So. If you're doing this, you can still use the thread local because it's going to be still tied to the, to the main thread of the application. But then you can create some tools so that when you submit something to the thread pool, it will keep the context. It's kind of simple yet because those points are like very well controlled and you can use a little bit of code to do that. But when you are in the reactive model, it's like everything is different. Every single message in an actor is processed in a different thread, a different moment, you don't know when it's gonna happen, you don't know where it's gonna happen. Like, all you know is that it's gonna happen in a thread pool, okay? And then everything starts to be, to be complicated. How do you keep context across all of these events as they flow through your application? So, we created something that we call the trace context. So, when we talk about a trace, the trace is the concept of the uh, functionality running on your application, and a trace context is the object that is actually backing that. When you start a trace, you create a trace context. And when you move this trace context across all of those events, you're actually doing what we call trace context manipulation. You are propagating the context across all events. Okay, this thing, uh, it's supposed to be the same for all events related to the same request. It has a name, it has a token, which is like a unique ID and it can contain, con contain segments, which are these little pieces to measure segments of your code. So, when we're using the, the ACA module, we are instrumenting the, the ACA bytecode so that when you send a message to an actor, if there is a trace context available, when you're sending the message, that same context will be automatically propagated so that when that actor gets the message, and it's going to process it, that same trace context is gonna be available just while it is processing that message, okay? After the message is gone, that trace context is gone as well. So if that message generates some other messages that go to other actors, then the context will get propagated to all those other actors or futures, okay? So th this works with tail, with ask, and with like any ACA pattern you have, and also works with the 
supervis uh, supervision mechanisms because it's not just the happy path. Like in the happy path, everything goes, but when something fails, you also want to know what this failure is related to. So all the system messages that are used for the supervision path are also covered with the instrumentation we have. And with futures, if you create a future while, you're, while you have uh, current trace context, the body of that future that will execute sometime in the execution context will execute having the same trans trace context available. And also, if you do transformations to a future, when those asynchronous transformations happen, they will also have the same trace context, okay? Now, reactive model, good. We have the trace context, we attach it to events, they flow through the application, and we're good. Now, we know a way to relate the very beginning of a request or, or a functionality processing with the, sorry, with the end of that point. We know where it starts, where it ends, using the trace context. Now, it's time to measure. We want to do this because we want metrics. Okay, and what should be measured? Usually, when people think about metrics, they talk about these things, mean, medium, maximum, blah, 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 like numbers. They usually think about numbers. If you ask someone, how is your application? Oh, yeah, we have like 50 milliseconds latency. 50 milliseconds, what? It, a single number doesn't mean anything, okay? You need to measure everything. Okay, you need to know how everything, that, and, and when I say everything, I don't need like every single aspect of, of your application, but I mean if you're measuring how long logging takes, you measure every single logging request, and you have all the information related to logging, okay? So, as we see it, the age of seeing playing numbers is over. It's time to see behavior. When we talk about latency, when we talk about mailboxes, when we talk about actors, it's not about numbers anymore. If you tell me X milliseconds for latency, I'm gonna say it means nothing. Tell me about your latency behavior. Tell me how your mailboxes are, are behaving. And to know behaviors, you need lots of data, not just a few numbers here and there, okay? So this comes with a challenge, obviously, because if we want to measure everything, we need to do it in a way which is very quick that allows you to sort like millions of measurements that can happen every second. And obviously we need to do it with low overhead because nobody's gonna use a monitoring tool that makes your application slower, okay? You need full capability to measure everything and still be able to do it in a constrained uh, uh, resources uh, environment. Like you need to do this with predictable CPU and memory consumption. So is it even possible? Yes, it is, thanks to the HDR histogram. How, is any of you familiar with HDR histogram? Yeah? Cool. This is a histogram that was created by Gil Tenney from Azul Systems, and it's a very different kind of structure for storing information, okay? Usually, what many uh, metric libraries offer is some sort of a statistical representation of the data that is, being, that is being recorded in the histogram. But this thing is able to create a data structure, which is basically a long array with buckets where, that allow you to put all the information you want within a single chunk of memory that is allocated only once when you create the histogram. So you create it, you give it a range, and you give it a precision configuration, and it will create all, all the necessary buckets for that. So it means that if you want to store 800 milliseconds in one of these HDR histograms, all you have to do, well, all the HDR histogram has to do is find the right bucket for, for that value and do plus one. So when you create one of these things, you provide two values, the range which by default in like all common uh, instruments, allows you to cover from zero to one hour in nanoseconds, which is a huge number, with 1% precision. It means that when you store something, it's probably not gonna store the exact value that you gave it, but it's not gonna be more than 1% away from the value. So if you want to store 100 milliseconds, maybe there's, not, there's no bucket for 100 milliseconds, but there's one for 101. 
and that difference is never going to be more than 1% away. Okay? And this gives us the opportunity to store every single measurement because it's just plus, plus one, plus one, plus, plus one in, in the right bucket, and that's it. it. It will not grow. It doesn't matter if you store a thousand or a billion requests in the same data structure. It's just numbers like counters within the long array going up and down. Okay? So we abuse of this thing. Okay, this, this was game changing to us because we were looking for things at the very beginning. We were not a metrics library. We just wanted to do some Maca monitoring and then we found this and we, we were like blown away. We want to use this thing. Okay, so our histogram implementation uses obviously the HDR histogram to store everything. If you're talking about processing time, timing mailbox, traces latency, segment latency, everything, all of those things are stored using the HDR histogram. Now if we talk about a min max counter, which is another thing we created specifically for the purpose of monitoring queues like mailboxes, this thing is keeping three values. When you talk about a mailbox, it's pretty much the same as, as when you talk about latency. You cannot settle with a single number. If you tell me your mailbox size is 20, it doesn't mean anything, okay? Because when you see that number, it already changed. Those are very dynamic components in your application that go up and down every single millisecond in your application. So just knowing a number is not enough. When you monitor queues, you need boundaries. Like how up is it going? And when it goes down, how down is it going? So this min max counter is like a simple counter, but it internally has three variables. One is tracking the minimum value, the other one is tracking the maximum value, and the other one is, is, keep, is staying in sync with the actual size of the mailbox we are monitoring at the moment. And we sample these values like every 100 milliseconds. So if you are, um, um, if you are flushing information every second, for example, you will get at least 30 measurements for that mailbox size. And when, when it gives you the min, it's like the real min, gives you the max, it's the real max. And this allows you to know the behavior of the mailbox. Because if, if the main value is always going down to zero, you know this guy is working fast enough. It doesn't matter if it gets lots of messages because it is draining all of them down. Now if you see the main value going up, up and up and up, then this guy is, gonna, is, is obviously slow, you need to do something, you need to make it faster, you need to split the work, or you are going to end up with an out of memory error because the mailbox uh, flooded all the heap on your application. We also have gouges, which are like, it's very simple. You give me a function to call every 100 milliseconds. 100 milliseconds, I say, because that's the default value, but you can configure it. Um, and then we just call that function while you give me, I put it on a histogram, and then we flush that on every tick. So these three guys here, all of them, they have different semantics when it comes to how they r collect the data, but the snapshots of this, these things are the same. All of them are histograms, like histogram snapshots. And the counter, yeah, this is the sad guy, no, no HDR histogram for it. It's just a number, like this, the counter snapshot is just a single number that goes on every tick. Now, this comes to something we talk more and more about every single week. It's about aggregation. We know already that everything your application do is, is being measured. We're measuring every single thing. You did a billion requests, we, we then come on, have the, that billion request, measure it, and we have that data when we send it to our reporting backends. But sadly, our reporting backends are not good enough. They are not prepared to handle that amount of information. Like the, one of the best options we have at the moment is using StatsD because it, al it allows you to push lots more of information than we can with, for example, New Relic or Datadoc. But still, you need, um, like, we, we need more. We have lots of information that is not possible to visualize in the things we currently have. So keep in mind that all the, all the info we have might not be very accurate 
depending on what reporting backing are, are you using. Okay, so now a few things that come with come on that may make your day easier. One of, thing, one of those is simple trace subscriptions. This is something that was born like uh, as a request from one of your users. He said, hey, we need something like this. We had an idea, we tried it out, and apparently it works. So this thing can give you not only metrics about your traces and segments, but it can also give you an object that contains uh, a simple snapshot of, well, this is your trace, and these are all your segments. This thing started at this point, ended in this other, and you can use that information to do a simple Gantt-like graph of your requests. We currently don't have any backend that is allow, that allow us to visualize that, but there is a, a way in Kanban where you can, that allows you to get that information, okay? And there is a thing I'm linking here, this is the guy who uh, started the conversation for this uh, new feature, and he created a blog post called uh, Logging Slowest in Request with Play, and he was using this to gather information about all requests on the application and log them. This is something really useful. It's sad that we don't have yet tools that allow us to show this, but there's something coming. There's something coming that will make this a lot better. One extra thing that sound very simple but it's extremely useful is logging the trace token. I told you that the token that we have on every trace is unique. And it means that if you are logging things in your application and everything happens in different threads, it's like everything looks out of order. And in this little example here, it's a nightmare to try to correlate things between all of these log statements. But if we include the trace token which we know is unique per request uh, in the patterns that you have to, to log in your application, then, well, you know easily that this log statement here is correlated to this one here and maybe to some other one below. You can just grab your logs and you get every single event related to a given invocation, even if that didn't happen on the same thread because that's what common is going to give you. We also have this thing called automatic trace token propagation. We do this through HTTP, and we also do it with the ACA remote module, so come on, ACA remote module. So what we do here is that since we already got our hands dirty with the instrumentation for these tools and libraries, well, we decided to put a little bit more. And what this feature gives you is that let's say you have a front-end plate application, and then it sends requests to some other applications. When you do that, when this guy uses the WS client to connect to, maybe this is a spray application, we include a header in the request specifying the trace token that was created when this request was started processing here. So when the spray instrumentation sees that, sees that uh, header coming, instead of generating a new trace token, it will use the same trace token that came from the request. It means that here, it will have the same token, and if you jump to it to another service, the same trace token will go all over the place. It means that if you're doing that, and you're also logging stuff, and you're logging the trace token, even while we don't have like real distributed traces, you kind of have them, because you can put this information in tools like Splunk or Elasticsearch or whatever, and then you search for a single trace token and you get everything that happened for that request across your uh, server fleet, including within the, the, each of those applications and all the asynchronous events related to it. And that's really important. It doesn't seem very cool, but when you use it and you solve problems with it, it's, it's really nice. We also have more modules. We have that I don't really, I really mention it. Um, we have this common annotation module, which, which obviously is not going to be cool for the Scala friends because common annotations, that's like Java thing. But we are also friends of the Java guys. And this is something that will allow people to just put add, trace, blah, and that's it. You can use this. And in fact, if you go to the documentation, you will see that the examples for the command annotation module are made with a Spring Boot application using annotations to monitor everything using uh, Kamon. We also have the Kamon system metric module, which 
just sits there, gathers information about your um, system performance and push it to the backends that are configured. Come on, JDBC is still experimental, but it will automatically create segments for all your JDBC interactions. It does now, but it needs a little bit more of work to, to be like really production ready. And of course, your module, this is open source. You can create your things. You can do more stuff. You can innovate and obviously share with all of us. We want you to share, OK? And now a quick look into the future of Come On. I mentioned it several times, not just now, across many months, that we are not happy with the backends we have. We know that there are many options, that there are many partners, companies doing stuff. We're not happy with that. And as good developers, when you're not happy with something, you create something new to add to the problem, you know? But hopefully, what we will do here will not add to the problem, but will actually bring something new, okay? What I'm about to show you is a very, 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 very early preview of some ideas we're putting together to create our own metrics backend so we can show the metrics in the way we think they should be seen, okay? So when I showed you guys this, you saw that there is this other module called Camino Light. Camino Light is our, um, Camino itself is the name for a new set of tools related to monitoring things will come on. This is something totally external. Actually, the code is not open source yet, but it's going to be open source soon. And it also works as an example of what you can achieve with Come On without doing anything in Come On Core or in any of Come On Core components. This is just another thing that connects to Common Core, gets the information and show it on a very specific or different way. So, um, wait. Uh, single. What? Give me a second, please. Okay, so when we started this, and please don't laugh, don't laugh about the ugly it looks like, but it's, it's gonna get a lot better. What we're doing here is that we create a new component and come on, and we are flushing all the information to that component, and we keep on the server side the last 30 minutes or 10 minutes of information. It's already serialized, and then when, we, when this web application connects, it just, gets all the data from the server and you keep it on the client side. Like everything I, I show you now, it's client side. So I have this routing actor, which as you see has simple spray application, which is the actor system name, is on the user side and its name is uh, routing actor. And this thing, is it? okay, good. It's already, processing something, okay? When we talk about visualization, there, there are two things there. This is like the typical thing you will see when you see histograms. It's uh, in the x-axis you have the latency levels, and the, in the y-axis you have all the counts on each of those levels. That's like the normal thing. What is wrong about that? This. People will always focus on this. When you see this, you, you think like, oh yeah, like everything is fast, and yeah, there is some tail latency that always happens. There is always something that will go a little bit slower. But the reality is that you cannot afford that anymore. Now, every single of your users is not expecting a okay application. All of them are expecting fast, and fast is immediately. Like, Years ago, fast was below five seconds, below two seconds. Now fast is this. You need to do everything faster. So this little tail here matters. Now, why does it, uh, what, what can we do about this? Well, we have this other graph here, and these three things are showing the processing time for an actor. This thing here is, um, sorry, oh, sorry. 
is showing you the latency, uh, the full spectrum latency behavior of this, like every single measurement here. And all these things are tied together. So if I zoom in one side of the graph, like all of the things will update immediately, real time, and you will see that like it, it is moving a little bit because data is coming into it, okay? So this seems really simple, but we think that the next generation of monitoring tools will look very, very like this, okay? That's all we have for today. I think I ate my time for questions, but if, if, if you want to start using, come on, just reach me out, I will be around tomorrow, and that's it. Thanks a lot for, for coming on stage. <laughs>